Hello. If you've ever said, I must be cruel to be kind, or I'm in a pickle, or on a wild goose chase, you've been quoting the great man himself. In the week that the country has been celebrating 400 years of William Shakespeare's legacy, I'm here in his hometown, Stratford-upon-Avon, to search for the religious influences that may have shaped his work. I decipher medieval wall paintings, glimpse a 16th century book of common prayer believed to have belonged to him, and look for answers in the inscription on Shakespeare's final resting place. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. And we join Shakespearean actor Simon Callow as he reveals what it's like to perform the great bard's work. Music oft have such a charm to make bad good and good provoke to harm, wrote Shakespeare in Measure for Measure. And today we have no shortage of music to inspire you with hymns from across the country, including a special performance of one of the Bard's own sonnets performed here at the church where he was both baptised and buried. But we begin with a joyous hymn that Shakespeare himself would have known, sung for us now in London where the Bard wrote most of his plays. It's a historic day here in Stratford-upon-Avon as 20,000 people have gathered to commemorate William Shakespeare 400 years after his death. But it's not all sorrow and tragedy. In a dramatic twist, both his death and his birth are marked on the same date. He is the most celebrated playwright in the history of the theatre. It's quite hard to overstate the influence his work has had on language and culture, so it's no wonder his hometown is putting on quite a show. 
But although his works are well known, his personal faith is more difficult to uncover. Perhaps the first clue lies in the town's guild chapel that was well known to Shakespeare's family. As Dr Paul Edmondson explains, the young Shakespeare grew up in a time when Catholic imagery was suppressed. It was a turbulent time for religion. Uh, the state had moved from Protestant to Catholic to Protestant again. And it was a time, surely, of psychological trauma for the people. Shakespeare has a direct connection to this very chapel, doesn't he? He does. When his father was Chamberlain for the Borough Council, John Shakespeare ordered the whitewashing and the defacing of the medieval images here. So this wall painting that we can still sort of see is, is important then? Oh, the Last Judgment in this chapel was also known as a doom image. Mm -hmm. And in Macbeth, when Shakespeare is conveying just how awful the image of the murdered King Duncan is, mm -hmm. he talks about it being like the great doom's image, perhaps thinking of paintings like this one. Uh, and in Hamlet, when he mentions purgatory, a Roman Catholic belief, he also mentions the death of 20,000 men who go to their graves like beds. When you see what this picture was like and the souls arising at the Last Judgment, uh -huh. it looks like they're just climbing out of bed. So it's becoming clearer and clearer that Shakespeare was heavily influenced by the religious iconography of his time. I think so. And he's really being brave in the way he's able to remind people of religious issues, but he wasn't allowed to refer to them explicitly because of censorship. But he could allude to it, and as the wall paintings have vanished, they're re-emerging in these vibrant, bold, brave images on stage. Shakespeare is undoubtedly Stratford upon Avon's most famous son, but of course he spent most of his professional life in London. And it's from the capital that Shakespearean actor Simon Callow shines a little more light on the Bard's relationship with the church. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man, in his time, plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. Famous words from As You Like It. And surely, the way Shakespeare saw the world. We're all actors in this wide and universal theatre, as he puts it. 
I've been enchanted, enraptured by the works of William Shakespeare since I was five years old. I've acted in his plays, I've written books about them. I've done a one-man show to try to find out who the man was who wrote these plays. He gives incomparably the greatest account of what it is to be a human being. But what of the spiritual dimension of his plays? This is Southwark Cathedral. In Shakespeare's day, it was St. Saviour's Parish Church, just a short walk from the Globe Theatre. We obviously don't know how often Shakespeare will have come to church here, although there was an expectation and a legal obligation upon people at, at one stage uh, to go to church. Um, we do know, however, that he paid for his brother's funeral here, and we also know that that funeral had to be arranged for the morning so that the show could go on in the afternoon. The, the theatre was by no means universally accepted by the establishment. Indeed, when Shakespeare first came to the capital, all productions had been forced outside of the city of London. But I've come to Shoreditch, near the site of the first purpose-built playhouse in London, to discuss with Professor Alison Shell how it wasn't all condemnation. Here in Shoreditch, on the foundations of this actual church, was the first actor's church. So that tells us there was a church which looked favourably on actors. Yes, and I think that's partly because the techniques of actors um, were so often used by preachers themselves. Both professions of preacher and player were in the business of communication and, um, and effective um, entertaining communication. If you really had to, mm -hmm. Alison, would you describe Shakespeare as a, a religious man or a non-religious man? I've never had the impression that he was somebody who found personal piety um, as important as many of his contemporaries did. An interesting point of comparison here is John Donne. You never get away from religion in what Donne writes. Yes, by comparison with John Donne, who's always thinking about things in, in eternal terms, mm. Shakespeare seems sublimely to connect with human life, with what it's like to be a human being. Yes, and in an age when Protestant theology um, was obsessed with the sinfulness of humanity, Shakespeare is offering um, a much more positive alternative, celebrating humanity. That's a religious perspective too. The idea of a spirituality rooted in human life is something that appeals to me, whether Shakespeare intended it or not. But what we do know me and my fellow actors know is that when we open ourselves to his work we experience an extraordinary life force a kind of profundity of emotion and experience which almost amounts to a religious experience for us <laughs> 